November 12th will be remembered for eons to come in the history of Ghana as uh, the day in the year 2020 marked uh, the time when former President Jerry John Rawlings passed on. And it was shocking for everyone within the country and across the world. Now also because particularly about two months prior, the former president had buried his mother. Now many Ghanaians could not believe that indeed he had succumbed to death. But according to the family, he passed on after a short illness. But a year on, his memory lives on and his memory will live on for a long time. Now, a year on, family, friends and sympathizers are gathered within or inside the Holy Spirit Cathedral to mourn him or mourn him and also celebrate the first anniversary of his passing and also mourn with the family, the wife, the four children as well as other allied families. Now before we take proceedings from within the Holy Spirit Cathedral, my colleague Ni Ayikwe Okain has been chronicling the life, the death and legacy of former President Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Born on June 22, 1947, the late Jerry John Rawlings attended the Achimoto School in Accra, where he completed his secondary education in 1967. He then enlisted as the flight cadet in the Ghana Air Force and was selected for officer cadet training at the Ghana Military Academy and Training School at Teshi in Accra. In March 1968, he was taken to the Air Force Base in Takrade to continue his training. He commissioned as pilot officer in January 1969 and won the Speed Bear Trophy as the best cadet in flying and airmanship. He continued to excel in the military and was promoted to the rank of Flight Lieutenant in April 1978. On June 4, 1979, he overthrew the military government of General Fred Ekufu to become Ghana's president at the age of 32. On grounds of infusing probity and accountability into the governance structure of Ghana, he ordered the execution by firing squad of Ekufu, two other former military heads of state, and five senior military officers. The action taken by the junior officers and other ranks of the Ghana Armed Forces was motivated by a desire to bring justice, social, economic and political, to all citizens of Ghana. After seven years in office, the army was going back to barracks without any steps having been taken to punish those who had tarnished the name of the armed forces. This situation posed a threat to the continued existence of the armed forces and the stability of the country, hence the spontaneous action of June 4th to preempt a coup immediately after handover to a civilian administration. On September 24, 1979, Rawlings handed over power to the new president, Hila Leman, after an election was conducted. This Revolutionary Council, during our short stay in power, have demonstrated openly what many people had only suspected before. Namely, that the holding of office in government in this country had in almost all cases been used to plunder the wealth of the nation. Ghana is looking up to you. Thank you. But, disgruntled by the continuing economic decline and Aleman, Rollins retook power in a bloodless coup on 31st December 1981. He established the Provisional National Defense Council as the government which was meant to be a short-term response to a crisis by the Aleman government which was accused of excessive dissipation of state resources and economic mismanagement. The rationale of the coup was to restore public confidence in the government. The PNDC government consisted of military officers and civilians. JJ reintroduced multi-party democracy in May 1992 and converted the PNDC into the National Democratic Congress. He won the presidential election of November 1992 by a landslide and was re-elected in 1996. In the year 2000, his vice president, the late John Evans Atamos, lost the election to John Kufour of the New Patriotic Party. 
Rollins established the Economic Recovery Program, suggested by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in 1982. J.J. Rollins also contributed to peace efforts in Liberia and Sierra Leone during the civil wars in the 1990s. Many Ghanaians have varied views of the legacies of the late former president. For some, Rollins was a figure that mounted the country on the course of political stability and growing prosperity. For others, he is remembered as a brutal military leader who unleashed punitive justice on Ghana during his regime under the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council. But against all odds, he was a man that also had his humorous moments. You know something? When I was a young officer, <laughs> and I went to the market with my wife one day, you know, to go and buy tomatoes. You know, I, I was feeling like a young married husband, you know, see what I mean? And in my uniform and followed my wife to the market, we parked the car and we're trying to buy some tomatoes. And uh, we were asking for a reduction of the tomatoes. <laughs> You know what? This lady, the lady just, <laughs> the lady said, give me your hands. And I gave her my hand. The tomato seller hmm, said, look at this, your nice soft palm. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Look at this, your nice soft palm. You think when you're rubbing your wife's back with it, she won't enjoy it? <laughs> My husband is a farmer. What is me, you know, what do you call it? He's been doing this for, what, what do you call it? He's been handling the hoe for so long, his hand is like sandpaper. <laughs> when, when my husband touches my back, I have to. Papa J, as he was affectionately called, died at age 73 on November 12, 2020 at the Kolobutijin Hospital in Accra after a short illness.